Here at EE Journal, we have been talking about FPGA-based prototyping for a long time. How long, you may ask? Well, I found our very first Chalk Talk just the other day about FPGA-based prototyping, and it was recorded back in 2010. Yes, 15 years and counting, ladies and gentlemen. And I'd say FPGA-based prototyping is more important now than way back in 2010. But funny enough, the challenges are still kind of the same. ASIC and FPGA architecture doesn't match. Manual processes can get messy. There are debug challenges and a whole lot more. But with Siemens robust emulation solutions, those challenges may be a thing of the past. <laughs> Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Roman Petit from Siemens and I examine the challenges of FPGA-based prototyping and how the automatic partitioning, automatic cabling, runtime and debug infrastructure and more of the Siemens VPS platform can make your next FPGA-based prototype project easier than ever before. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Siemens. Hi, Roman. Thank you so much for joining me. Hello, Amelia. I'm pleased to be with you on this Chalk Talk. Excellent. Okay, so Roman, FPGA-based prototyping has been around for as long as FPGAs have been around. So what do you say has changed in this realm over the years? First of all, Amelia, there are things that haven't changed. You still need to compile ASIC RTL targeting FPGA primitives, and you still want to run your bitstream on a targeted hardware based on FPGA. And finally, you still want to be able to extract some debug information out of that run. What has changed is the size of the design we need to prototype, the complexity of the design constructs, and also the amount of software cycle you need to run on those platforms. Nowadays, doing it not automatically is usually long, requires a lot of expertise, and is hardly repeatable from project to project. It means that you need to reinvent the wheel many times. Okay, so Roman, I understand the hardware part, more pins, lower power, and so on. But what about the implementation software? Why wouldn't the FPGA vendor tools not be sufficient enough anymore? Very good questions. Let's look at the three major steps for deploying an FPGA prototyping system. First, you need to compile you need to map the ASIC or the SOC design into the FPGA. Secondly is the execution phase, running the FPGA-based prototype for verification and or for software validation purposes. And third is the debug phase, how to debug and analyze issues found in this execution phase. All three phases have unique requirements, but all three phases have in common that the vendor tool alone is not suitable anymore to do the job. What is needed is an advanced prototyping implementation, run, and debug tool suite, like our VPS. VPS stands for Veloce Prototyping System. This software enables FPGA prototyping, living up to its full potential. Okay, that makes sense, but... Can you also tell me more about what challenges the users are facing when mapping a design onto an FPGA-based prototype? Well, let's go here in details. ASIC and FPGA are not the same technology. Therefore, they don't have the same structure. IP and RTL is usually being translated to those FPGA primitives. Doing those changes is time-consuming. And usually, the FPGA vendor tool is not doing those changes automatically. It means that there is manual work. And with the increased complexity, our user needs automation. They also need performances, and they need to integrate their prototype with external target. All those requirements 
need a lot of work, really. All those aspects are the roots of making VPS available. So give me some more information about VPS. What exactly is it? So as you see on this slide, VPS does few things. It brings automation to Velochip for FPGA CS hardware, converts the ASIC to FPGA RTL. I will give you a few examples later on. VPS also reduced the setup time from weeks to days. We can have customers reducing by 4x what they need to work in order to get the FPGA compiled. VPS provide advanced debug instrumentation. VPS also enable you to validate what has been implemented even before you go through the half day long Vivado process. All right, so Roman, can you go into a bit more detail? Yes, of course. So if we look at RTL modification, on clocking, for instance, we are introducing clock management module, avoiding any RTL modification. On the motherboard itself, we make use of the eight clock domains and enable user to create an infinite number of clocks. And we distribute those clocks all over the FPGA that the platform has with almost no skew. Then if we look at memory, Internal memory in RTL are automatically mapped to FPGA memory resource. No RTL changes at all. Large memories can be mapped internally or using physical memory board that we provide, and that is handled automatically. For advanced memory model, we are providing what we call memory soft models. This is unique, and this enables users to bring those models to FPGA, which you could not do automatically. All those concepts enable less work and efficient bring up. Last but not least, partitioning. It's usually a nightmare when you have to do it manually. Only experts and users with deep design knowledge can achieve it. VPS provides a fully automatic flow for both partitioning and cabling. Of course, this won't give the best performances, but the goal isn't there. The goal is to validate functionality faster. In a second time, VPS enables the user to constrain the partitioner and reach the highest performances. Okay, I think I understand. So, Roman, can you give me an example about how long it would take without a tool like VPS and how much VPS can speed it up? Yeah, of course. Let's look at a simple diagram. If we look at ratios, Single FPGA design bring up, to be honest, will be fairly similar with or without VPS. The advantage for the user would be debug. We will talk about it later. But as soon as you get multiple FPGA designs, VPS shows some gains, already with two, if you look at the diagram. When you have large, very large FPGA design, we are talking about 12 plus FPGA, which is quite common today we see our customers decreasing their FPGA prototyping bring up by 4x. That gain could also be considered as infinite in a way. No one will want to do 100 FPGAs bring up manually, but VPS does. Okay, so now you have the bit files and can start executing your tests on the prototype. Isn't that pretty simple? Yes and no. If you keep the system on your desk or in the lab, I would agree with your statement. But if you are in an international company with thousands of FPGAs in the data center located somewhere, here you need some automation and queuing process to handle that. VPS provides the ability to use your FPGA capacity as a farm, as you would use servers, basically. I have a two FPGA design with the following cable. Where can I run? This is exactly the question the software is answering. Then our user use regular job scheduler to launch the jobs. It means that VPS enables CAD team to share the resource and companies to optimize their investment. Wow, I guess prototyping has changed a lot over the last few years. On the other hand, it is still a verification tool, right? 
So how does a user expect to find bugs and debug those? How exactly is it done? You're absolutely correct. Debug is a key aspect of using an FPGA-based prototype. That said, debug can mean very different things depending on what you are using the prototype for. First, if you are a prototype implementer or platform builder, and you are using it for cheap hardware debug purposes or for bring up purposes, then you need things like probing, waveform generation, and so on. You might want to do it at speed with probes and VPS enable probe early in the flow at RTL level or late in the flow at netlist level. But you might also want to get full visibility and VPS provide it through reconstruction and an automatic clock staping, enabling continuous upload of data and full visibility of a time window. Combining both technology, as shown on the diagram, enables you to get faster to the debug point and faster to the visibility. On the other hand, if you are doing software validation on it, you need very different things like memory upload, memory download, save and restore. You want to bypass boot sequences, for instance. You want the ability to connect to a software debugger and so on. With memory backdoor access, software engineer can modify code on the fly by checking and changing memory content. With save and restore, you can bring the system back to a certain state. And with at speed target, connecting a debugger or a third party system enables full driver and SDK testing, for instance. Wow, Roman, this is very impressive. And I can see why today's FPGA based prototype systems are so essential. So, any last words of wisdom on what a user should look for and take into consideration when selecting an FPGA based prototype solution? Yeah. You need to understand what your main goals requirements are. Are you looking for performance? Are you looking for software validation? What kind of at speed interface do you need? Did you need advanced debug on the hardware? And basically, always consider hardware and software capabilities. FPGA prototyping is not only the hardware. This is the software, the test bench, and the hardware three things. And then, of course, you need to select a trusted partner who can support you today, tomorrow, and everywhere in the world. Fantastic. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Emilia. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Siemens. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talk section of EE Journal. You can't miss it, it's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal. <laughs>